What's up, YouTube? This is a quick look at the H4M Pro. Have you been looking for a new audio recorder? Well, if so, this one might be just the one to get. Today we're looking at the Zoom H4M Pro audio recorder. This is the new update for 2020. Intro. Intro. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the channel. We're doing a quick unboxing and going over some of the features and how to start using your H4N to make recording. Let's jump right in with the unboxing. The first thing you'll notice about the packaging is it has a nice matte satin finish. Great presentation. It comes with a plastic protective case. This is just so it doesn't get scratched during transportation. Some paperwork, instruction manual, and also Cubase recording software if you need it. Two AA batteries. It doesn't come with a USB cable or power cable. And like every other piece of technology, it does not come with an SD card. I've been using the H4M Pro for about two years now, and I gotta say, overall, this thing is pretty awesome. So, what can it be used for? Interviews, podcasting, music, filmmaking, and voiceovers, just to name a few main examples. It really shines with recording vocals and voiceovers or louder sounds like instruments or crowds. It's an excellent buy for travel or remote recording for videos and podcasts, or if you're a vlogger. It also can be used as a backup recorder when you send the signal from the audio interface or a mixing console via the XLR inputs on the bottom. You can also use it as an audio interface on your computer by connecting the USB cable. Okay, so let's jump into some info. Features. Here are some of the main features that make the H4M Pro a great recorder. It has onboard top-mounted XY stereo microphones. They're made to handle up to 140 decibels and professional-grade preamps that warm the vocals and make them sound fantastic. The microphones work in a 90 and 120 degree configuration. It has 4-track recording and locking XLR TRS connecting inputs, overdubbing, and effects. Another great thing about this Zoom recorder is the build quality. This recorder is tough as nails. It's very sturdy and has great build quality. The software runs super stable and does exactly what you need it to, without hesitation, hiccups, or glitches. The buttons are firm, but nice and responsive. Let's take a quick look at the layout. On this side, there's an SD card slot, record level buttons, menu button, and scroll wheel. On the back, there's a built-in speaker for playback, along with an 8th inch external mic input. If we take a look on this side, there's an option for remote input and 3.5mm headphone input, speaker headphone volume control buttons, a USB port, and a power button. So pretty simple and straightforward. Alright, now it's time to set up the recorder. H4M Pro setup. Throw the batteries in it. Toss the SD card in there and flip the power on. Then you'll want to go into the menu and format the SD card. Pro tip. This thing is known to start up slow, so using a smaller SD card will speed up the start time significantly. To show an example, this test with an empty 16 gig card took 26 seconds. But no worries, an 8 gig card will give you 4 hours of recording at the highest wave setting. Let's jump into the menu and set this thing up to our liking. Step 1. Located in menu, under folder, select a folder. You can select which folder to store your recording files. I usually just throw all the files in folder 1 so they're easy to find. Step 2. In menu under record, selecting the audio recording format. Here you'll have a bunch of options to save the recordings as WAVs or MP3s. For a bit of a higher resolution, I selected WAV, 48kHz and 24-bit. Step 3. In the main menu under mode. Mode selection lets you pick how you want to record. Stereo, 4-channel or MTR, which is multi-track, which turns it into a 4-track studio with built-in effects and capability to overdub. For now, I'm just using it in stereo mode. When in stereo mode, it'll light up the mic input here. The zoom recorder can use the top mount XY mics or, if we press the 1-2 input, then this will select that we're plugging in our own condenser mics at the bottom. If you're going to be using a lapel mic that needs power, or an external condenser mic that needs phantom power, you'll need to activate that option in the menu like so. In Menus, it's under Input, then locate Plug-in Power, and select On. Then your lapel mic power is good to go. 
If using a mic that requires phantom power, you go under Input Settings Location Phantom, and then select 24 or 48 volt depending on what the mic requires. Alright, that about does it. And now that we have the initial setup out of the way, we're ready to make our first recording. Now that everything's good to go, here's how we make our first recording. To demonstrate, we'll be using the onboard microphones. On the front, the red light for input mic will be lit up. Then we press the record button. This arms the recording, and the record button starts blinking. But this doesn't actually start the recording. This arms the track so you can adjust the volume levels before recording, so you aren't peaking or clipping the audio. Once the levels are adjusted, you can now press the blinking recording button again, and it'll start the recording. You'll know you're recording for sure, because the timer on the LCD at the top will begin showing the seconds moving up. To stop the recording, you just hit the stop button on the side here. When doing a recording, the general rule of thumb is, you'll want to be in the negative 12 to negative 6 area when recording. This way you still have some room and aren't clipping if things get unexpectedly a bit louder. Congratulations, you've made your first recording. That's all folks! You're ready to start using your H4N recorder to make some cool projects happen. If you like this video and found it helpful, go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time!